Hello, and thank you for joining me for another lesson in Sage X3. In today's lecture, we're going to discuss how to access the data models within the help files of the system. Uh, the data models are a useful tool to any developer or inquiry or report writer that's looking to see the database structures in the system and all the respective fields that make up the tables so they can do their reporting. So in order to access the data models, uh, what you're going to do is up on your mega menu, come over and click on the question mark icon, which is the help. And you're going to go to this option here for Online Help Center. Through the Online Help Center, you're going to click on the option for Technical Help. Then over in the Data section, you're going to come down to the option here for Data Models. All right, so <clears throat> underneath here, the data models are indexed in the following way. Uh, tables and data structures in relationship to the common data, in relationship to the CRM in X3, data model associated with the purchasing functions, the selling functions, inventory, production, and then the finance. So let's say for purposes of this discussion that we're interested in taking a look at the data models associated with our sales invoices so we can do some revenue and cost analysis. So what we're going to do is click on this option here for sales. Then over here in the left panel, I'm going to go ahead and hit my drop down and you can see here so my sales are further indexed into quotations normal sales orders, contracts, deliveries, invoices, returns, and sales price book information. So in this case, I want the sales invoice. Then I'll click on this green go button. All right, so now here's your uh, data physical model for the sales invoices. And now you can see um, all these rectangles herein represent all the different uh, tables that are at play as it relates to uh, sales invoicing. Okay, so kind of at the heart of the structure, you have your sales invoice header record, your sales invoice costing record, your sales invoice detail record, then it kind of spider webs out into all the other associated tables that could be correlated to these tables in the system. Okay, so here, let's go ahead and take a look at the primary table in the, mo the invoice model, which this is the sales invoice header. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and that pulls up the following. Okay, so up at the top here, I have the name of the table. Here's the three-digit abbreviation of the table that you'll see commonly referenced throughout X3, the table abbreviation. The description of the table and its module. Down here in the key section, you have all the different uh, primary keys that the table can be made up as. The, the first one, the primary one, is the one listed on the first line. So I can see here... For instance, one of the keys to my sales invoice header table is this NUM field. So now down in this column section here, I can scroll down and find my NUM field. And that's the document number or the invoice number. Okay. So again, you see in here, here are all the various fields that are part of the sales invoice header record. Okay, so you have the field name, you have the description of the field, uh, you have the dimension if it's an array field, um, you have the associated data type, okay, you have the length of the field, then this menu field here is in reference to if the 
uh, field is tied to what's called a local menu within X3. Uh, this provides you with the ability to kind of tunnel into the local menu to see what makes it up. Okay, so in this case, you know, this particular field here for the address is tied into a local menu field one here. So I can click on that and I can see local menu one is a yes, no local menu where the numeric value of one represents no and the numeric value of two represents yes. Okay, here's another um, example of a local menu. So data type M for local menu. In this particular field for the currency rate type is tied to local menu 202. So I can click on that and see that local menu 202 is made up of four different values for the different uh, currency exchange rate types that can be set up in the system. Okay. If I have questions as to the nature of what a particular data type is, uh, for instance, I could, this uh, business partner code field, it's got a BPR data type. I can go ahead and click on that. And that'll give me a little bit of information um, in regards to the data type. So this data type is a linked object to the business partner record. Okay. So if I want to go back, I can go back to my dictionaries here or go back to my index. And that'll tunnel me over to the menu where I can go and um, access other help information or I can come back into this data models option here, then start my search once again. Okay, so uh, that's a little bit about the data models within X3. Um, I hope this lesson was of help to you. If so, I'd ask you to please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to inbox me.